This time, I'm at a historic hotel stuck in the past. It feels choked with centuries of neglect. With an overwhelmed owner... I feel like a hamster on a wheel. ..struggling to manage his staff. Not one single member of staff has stayed in the restaurant. I'm horrified by what I've seen here. I can tell myself told off. This is my first attempt at covert ops. I'm about to sneak into Churston Court. That is, the owners don't know that I'm coming tonight. I want to see what it's like when their guard is down. I can't see any staff anywhere. Which way? Makes me wonder what kind of welcome guests usually receive here. So I'm now in the bedroom so I can take off the disguise. I'm bored of hoteliers being prepared and being all smiley. It's not the most impressive start to my stay. Hopeless romantics Chris Hudson and Jonathan Smith bought the hotel near Brixham in Devon just five months ago. So we walked in and just fell in love with the place. Previous owner made him an offer that basically he couldn't refuse. They were bowled over by the Grade two listed manor's illustrious history. Most of the rooms are named after different people. Like this is Cromwell and Nelson we have here. There is no known connection between Nelson, for example, and this building. The couple had dreams of creating a luxurious boutique hotel after running a successful pub nearby. The vision was to turn it into the really top-notch, high-quality hotel business. But the reality has been a rude awakening. I just check on the um, cesspit. Lovely, yeah. It's one of my daily jobs. And as you can see, it's full. Having only seen the hotel's potential, they underestimated the huge amount of work and money it would take to revive it after decades of neglect. It's been extremely difficult, to, to be honest. The budget was literally uh, blown out of the water. Faced with dwindling trade... We've got 18 bedrooms and a huge restaurant, which are not nearly busy enough to make money. You'd be lucky if you had anybody in the restaurant. And dismal reviews. We want our customers who are staying here to, to love the place so much that they just don't want to leave. With accountant John's attentions focused on other business ventures... My role is, is, is more back office. Cheers, bye. bye. The day-to-day -day running of the hotel rests squarely on Chris's shoulders, leaving him overwhelmed. Right, uh, Ali? Yeah. Oh, jolly good, I found you. I'm here virtually 24 hours a day. There's just a list as long as your arm. And struggling to manage the staff. I feel like a hamster on a wheel. Come on. He's trying to do every job in the hotel. Napkins, then I'll come in on Friday. Well, what are we going to do tonight? I've only got one pair of hands. I can't access that. Uh, try try till two. I know you should delegate. And that's the Regency wine order that's done. But if you want anything doing properly, do it yourself. The couple's love affair with Churston Court is already heading for heartbreak. We employ nearly 40 people, so we need this business to be a success. Before things get any worse, they're hoping I can help drag their medieval manor out of the Dark Ages. Without Alex's help, I think we'll find it a struggle. The risk is that we will lose our way without a clear sense of, of strategy. <laughs> But in the cold light of day, the hotel feels more dated than historic. I'm really not a fan of the kind of Stygian gloom created by the dark red everywhere. I don't know what the boys had as their vision when they want, thought initially about buying the place. It's a bit too theme park for me, so far. The creaky staircase. The suit of armour on the stairs. It feels kind of choked with centuries of neglect. Although they're expecting me to arrive today, the discovery I actually stayed last night should be something of a surprise. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, Hi. Welcome to Chesson Court. Very nice to... <laughs> Meet you. Thank you. Hello, I'm Jonathan. Very nice Hi, to meet you, Alex. Hi, Good Jonathan. To meet you. Hi, Good to meet you. Good to meet you. How are you doing? Good. Yes. Thank you. Yes. How are you doing? Uh, struggling, I think, a little bit. How many people did you have in last night? 
for lunch, uh, for dinner last oh, night. Or to stay. <laughs> Four. OK. Four. Uh, Apart from me. <laughs> I snuck in <laughs> and I stayed in Francis Drake. Francis Drake, that's the room three. I was quite surprised that I managed to get in without anyone noticing me. Ah, that would be me. I was on the other side of the uh, building at that time. There's a lot to do here, isn't there? An awful lot. It's a big, big mountain to climb, I think. A bit um, enough more than you can chew. Uh, <laughs> uh, probably, <laughs> probably. Um, uh, Before you bought it, did you do that hard-headed business thing of going through the profit and loss account and working out where you could add value and? No. Um, and do you have a grand plan? Uh, put the place back on the map. It used to be the in place to be, and now it's right on the, on the, almost on the floor now. I don't know what's more shocking, their lack of concern that I stayed unnoticed, or that they bought this place blind with no business plan. Unless you have very deep pockets, it is sheer madness to buy a business without taking a forensic look at the accounts. For the rest of us mere mortals, Obviously, looking at the accounts is an essential part of the purchasing process. I'm looking forward to having more chats with you. Absolutely, that'd I'll be fantastic. I'll have breakfast if you don't mind. Well, that's course, no problem. Yeah. I'll take you through to a oh, restaurant. Thank you. Through. No problem at all. It was a big surprise, absolutely. I'm um, quite shocked, actually. We'll have to ask her if she climbed off a grain pipe or something. Oh, yeah, up the wisteria. Yes. <laughs> From the little I've seen, I'm already worried about the amount to do here, given their limited funds. First impressions are... Jesus Christ. <laughs> they really have bitten off a lot. Um, the idea was to revive the place. Well, that's wide and woolly enough to cover a lot of things. It isn't a plan of how you're actually going to achieve that. It soon becomes clear that it might take the kiss of life to revive this place. There's food mashed into the carpet, there's dirty tables, there's a stench in here that suggests to me that there are massive underlying problems. I'm at Churston Court in Devon, a hotel that is seriously struggling. The gloomy decor has already left me feeling oppressed. And a lack of attention to detail at breakfast does little to raise my spirits. You know, they've got cereal bowls there and cereal, no spoons. A menu that could do with a wipe, frankly. Thank you, darling. Thank you. Would you like toast? No, that's perfect. OK. Thanks. Thank you. You know, before you even start looking at the bigger picture, at least make sure you get the little things right. Seems fairly obvious. The biggest mistake any novice hotelier can make is trying to run before they can walk. There's absolutely no point aiming for five-star luxury if you can't even supply rudimentary levels of service. An unmanned reception, cutlery going AWOL and grubby menus. Individually, they're small things, but together they're symptomatic of a worrying lack of care for the guest experience. So, the first thing I'm confronted with is a dirty menu, which is not, not nice. a good start. That's not a good start. It's not nice. You've got cereal and fruit there. What are you supposed to eat them with? There's not a spoon anywhere. Not a spoon anywhere. That's uh, somebody that didn't lay up properly. Yes. No, but what is clearly happening is that you've got a lot of people here who aren't being directed about what to do okay. and how to do it. Right. Of course, there's the bigger picture stuff, but even if you can't mm. do the bigger picture stuff, get yeah. the detail right. Absolutely. So I'm going to continue looking around, but mm. that's something that you need to start noticing because you have to be game ready. Absolutely, absolutely. Totally okay. understand now. I just got my ass whipped by Alex. Oh, there you go then. Yeah, you see? <laughs> the first stop on my fact-finding tour of the hotel is the Armoury, a multi-purpose function space licensed for weddings. It should be one of the hotel's most impressive assets. I do find the kind of haphazard collection of shields, swords, gilt mirrors, tapestries really, really unnerving. I mean, <laughs> this is, you know, my OCD is kind of going, <laughs> is certainly flaring up here. I can't, you know, look up here. There's food mashed into the carpet, there's dirty tables, 
There's a stench in here that we could do with having a window open. It's all confirming my worst fears about the way this place is being run. Professionally, I know that it means that staff are just not being directed, and it suggests to me that there are massive underlying problems. Let's go and look at the rooms. Priced at £140 per night, the four-poster Henry VIII room is one of Churston Court's most expensive bedrooms. It is amazing how much nicer these rooms are when the red is leavened with not red. Any not red will do. I mean, you could put orange in here or even peach. God, dare I say it. Somehow, it's not so enormously heavy. I mean, this is special. I've got new roll envy. That's never happened to me before. <laughs> Something to brighten anyone's heart, isn't it? For your own little squire. Your new roll, sir. <laughs> It feels as if they have just taken it on board exactly as it is. They haven't really thought through how they could add value to the place. I mean, the things that I would immediately do are start rearranging the furniture. I would pull down every picture that's above eye height to eye height. This room has great potential. It's got fantastic natural light. It's got a lovely bed. You know, You've got to celebrate what there is and start trying to work out what you can save and what you bloody give the old heave-ho to. And the sooner, the better. But before guests get anywhere near the rooms, we need to get them through the front door. And outside, I've spotted more evidence the basics of good hospitality are being overlooked. So, there was a few things in the breakfast room that made me think that your eye is not completely on the essential detail of the place. And so I came out to see if this impression is reinforced. Now, when is the last time that the ashtray was emptied? Uh, that would be yesterday, probably, yesterday. So that... You've got a lot of staff in there. I mean, generally, the first impression that you would get yeah, is not someone that's being run. No. It's kind of surviving. Surviving, So yeah. there's been no actual thought about right. what someone's going to think when they get here, and that's the first thing they see. With fundamental levels of customer service being neglected, if Chris and John won't tackle the issue, I will. So, first of all, I assume you'll walk in the front. You see something lying on the ground, the rule is you pick it up. You see an ashtray is filled, you take it in to be emptied and washed out. You see something that's fallen over, you straighten it up. So, can I just ask you, what do you think are the areas that n need to be improved? Um, attitude between staff. Oh, that's an interesting one. Tell me. And there's always, it's not my problem, that's, that's not me, or don't put me on with him, I can't work with them, so-and-so's done this, and it's always a fight. And we've actually had that mentioned on a comment card upstairs. How did guests get to notice yeah, that? Um, That's guess, bad. Um, something about in the dining room, staff saying things about each other and it was overheard by a guest, which clearly isn't good. Mm -hmm. Comments to each other should only be in the context of work. It should not be in the mode of personal gossip or commenting on customers. My alarm bells are ringing and talking to staff member Ashley does little to allay my fears. You brought up something really interesting at the staff meeting there and I kind of just wanted to find out more about it. Is there a clear staff structure here? Um, no. There's no clear-cut um, actual structure of, of who does what. I mean, there's absolutely no excuse for that. It's not rocket science. Good service relies on every member of staff having a good understanding of their role and responsibilities. It's up to you to set the expectations and then make sure that everyone lives up to them. The scale of the problem here is starting to hit me. I think overall today, I feel possibly more worried than I did when I arrived last night. Just the first impressions, just the cleanup needed, just the decluttering. Just the hosing down and that lackadaisical attitude has been reinforced since meeting the staff. But it's hardly surprising the staff are feeling demotivated. No one is managing them. 
and just when I think it can't get any worse, I have a chance encounter with a less than happy customer. Are you here to, like, fix this? Hopefully. And we're really excited it got new owners, thinking, oh, hopefully we'll see some improvement. Yeah. And as if the service couldn't get any worse, last time I came, not only is there no one to serve you, but the food's all so cold. I've seen and heard enough. The biggest issue here, besides the dated, cluttered decor, is that the staff aren't being properly managed. I have to say to you, you have got to tighten up your staffing practices. Yeah. I'm horrified by what I've seen here. Mm -hmm. And I don't say that lightly. Mm. Tell people who they report to, tell people what their responsibilities are, tell them their expected standard of behaviour, and then make them stick to it. Absolutely. So there should, there should be a, a clear structure in place so, so that people know it's their job and just get on with it. And I think we haven't got to that point. John and I are floundering in a, in a respect that I think it's a bit overwhelming the size of the building that what we thought initially what we was taking on. You've got to be strategic. Yeah. Rather than responsive. Okay. You know, write it all down as you think about it and write it in zones. So restaurant, bar, yeah. rooms. And then when I next come, I would like to see a list of the things that you think need doing. Even if it runs to six pages, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Although the hotel's history is a big part of its USP, I'm convinced it needs to be decluttered and given a more current look. It's one thing coming to an ancient building, mm. but you want to feel that it is up to date and has yeah. modern practices yeah. and <clears throat> a kind of contemporary zeitgeist yeah, about it. Yeah. You cannot live on former glories. People want a slightly more pared down and slightly more curated look. Right, OK take everything down and work out where everything should go up. Two tips. One, never hang a mirror where someone can't see themselves. The other thing is pictures should tend to be hung in a line. Upstairs, I'm going to send in my design team to show the boys how to revitalise the dated bedrooms without spending a fortune. What I'd like to do is try and show you how you can make the rooms more palatable by using some of the basic elements that you've got. Mm -hmm. How I can reduce the impact of the red by adding in some different colours. None of us have endless funds. No. And so I think it's nice to be able to be told, look, great, we've got lovely four-poster beds, we'll keep the four-poster beds. How do we then make that room a bit more wow? Yes. Does that sound like there's a yeah, beginnings sounds, yes, of a plan? Yeah, there's a, there's a starting point, and that's what we need um, to, to start moving forward, yeah. rather than just floundering, I think. We have an, a window of opportunity, and it's got to be seized. We need to manage the staff slightly better than we have been doing. They really need to start putting some rigorous standards in place and reinforcing them. you just got to take that on the chin and um, not make too much of it. There's been a lot of nodding, but have they actually taken anything in and have they actually taken anything on board? I suppose I won't know till next time when I come back and see if they've done anything that I've asked them to do. And put them on that big, big, the big table in there. First signs are certainly promising. So, right, what we're going to do is, Jake, if you go and get that mirror over there, don't drop it, please. It's seven <laughs> years' bad luck as it is. No sooner had I left than Chris finally grasped the nettle and started trying to declutter the public rooms. I think Alex is either going to lump it or like it. I don't know what she's going to do. She'll probably have a go at me, but... <sighs> Good save. Still in the cricket tea. I think Chris is just winging it, really. I don't think he has a plan of action. Cool. See, that looks better already. Yeah. No, straighten the middle one up first. Right, up you go. Health and safety out this fire. Oh, health and safety's out the window. There we go. But with the future of the hotel dependent on Chris giving the staff the training they need... I've never seen people walk about a building so bloody slowly. I mean... Like really, it's make sure everyone does their job. job. It's not going to be a quick fix. The pace of change is glacial. I'm on my way back to Churston Court in Devon. 
I hope everything's going to be OK and ship shape and Bristol fashion, as they say, but uh, hopefully Alex should be arriving soon, no doubt, but uh, we'll have to wait and see. This time, owner Chris seems much better prepared for my arrival. First impressions are a bit better than they were last time. They've definitely made an effort to tidy up a bit. Things that should be clean are clean, more or less. The tables could still do with the polish, but there you go, maybe I'm just being picky. Hopefully inside, he's also taken my advice to give the clutter of mismatched medieval jumble a more modern, curated look. So this is already a disappointment. It's not that hard to hang pictures in a line. Aha! Aha! <laughs> Welcome back. Thank you. Ooh, Thanks lovely. for having me back. How's it going? Good, fine. You had a nose? I've had a little nose. Glad to see that you've tidied up the front. It's looking much better. Yeah. It's just clean. Yeah. You didn't manage to straighten up the paintings in the dining room, yet. No. 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 I, but I took most of the crap down, all the Did. car boot sale stuff. Did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Good. So you've definitely made an effort here. Yep. You've moved the mirrors, the ridiculous mirrors. Oh, ridiculously high mirrors, yes. Moved a few of the bits round. You've done a quite a good job. Yeah. I think we yeah. could improve upon it. We could, we could improve a lot. If I'm honest. A lot, if you're honest. So I would love to see the list of jobs. The list of jobs, yes. No problem, I'll go and fetch it. All oh, right, lovely. Excellent. Thank you very no much. Problem. It's true that I'm happy that it's cleaner, but I don't know how much of an eye they actually have. So I think they're probably going to need quite a lot of help in this regard. I'm also convinced the best way to help Chris prioritise and stop feeling swamped is a room-by-room -room inventory of outstanding jobs to tackle. What is that all? I was expecting sheaves and sheaves. Well, just a, just a, sort of a mini sheave at the moment. But once again, he's focused on the big picture and not the all-important little details. This is great. Mm -hmm. But some of these things are kind of on a master list, like decisions, branding, marketing and product. Okay. I mean, I think you also need some very achievable aims in a list as a visible example to yourself that you're moving forward with this okay. as a project, that you can actually tick things off a list. Okay, okay? that's cool. Yeah, that's no problem. I'm starting to worry. Chris is making all the right noises, but I'm not sure he's really listening. I think Chris may have slightly misunderstood my brief from last time about having a master list so that, however insignificant, every day you manage to achieve some small goal. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting there slowly. Just silly little things, really, that she pointed out, um, what the tasks that she wanted us to do. The pace of change is glacial. It just needs kicking back into shape. At least my design team have already started kicking the rooms into shape. In one, I'm using an inexpensive coat of paint to banish the red completely. Next door, I'm going to simply replace the dated soft furnishings to give the red a more modern twist. Two options that work with the existing furniture to up the wow factor on Chris's limited budget. While my team revamped the rooms, I want to find out if Chris has started giving the staff the basic training I think they need. Wait patiently. Wait patiently. So, I want to put the hotel's customer service to the test. Last time I was here, I met a very nice lady called Denny, who told me how disappointing her experiences of the place had been. Not only is there no one to serve you, but the food's also cold. Without telling the hotel, I've invited Jenny and some friends for lunch. I'm going to enlist her as my spy so that I can see for myself what it's actually like. Yeah, we need four. And we're secretly filming what happens. And what's your time for the day? And the soup, please. Sorry. The staff not knowing the menu isn't a good start. Just a plain ham sandwich, a child's one. The, the wild sea bass food. 22 minutes in and no sign of food. What time are we? It's about quarter past, I think. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. right. Thank you. It's 10 to 2 now. 38 minutes after ordering, lunch finally arrives. Oh, look. Oh, sorry. See this? But some of the cutlery's missing again. Hi, can we get another teaspoon? Yeah. 
and the delay getting their food leaves one mum having to eat and run. Yeah, just I'll sort yours out. Just say that it's just too bad. Yeah. Time for the verdict. Hello, Hello. mummies. Hi, how are you? How was it? It was a very long Which, way. as you can see, we've unfortunately once had to leave just because it was slightly too, too long. And with children, it's, it's not, just yeah, very not long. Yeah. As you can see, they're a bit Hello. fed up now. Oh, they were very friendly, we though. Had, well, Do you think it's improved a bit since your last time? I think they're trying very hard, although I think yeah, yeah, the there's wait obviously a way to go. is longer than acceptable, isn't it, really? Yeah. I think my guests have been very understanding about the slow service, but I'm really frustrated. Right, thank, thank you, you so yeah, much. Both of you. Chris clearly hasn't listened to a word I've said about getting the basics right. Right. Are oh, you free? I'm free, Dad. I think it's time we sat down and had a chat. Uh -huh. Yes? Let's go. Um, I've got to fess up. The mothers with children were yep. sent in by me, yep. but I think it was useful because it did identify some problems. Yep. The lady yep. said to me, the service was a bit yep. hit and miss. Yep. Can, do you think that's yep. fair? Absolutely fair. They waited a very long time. Everyone says to the staff, everyone is so nice. Mm. But nice only takes you so, so far. far. Absolutely. They need to be trained. Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, they've got to pull it all together. And make you've it got all... to pull it all together and really be strict. You know, I said as soon as I came in, the tables haven't been yep. polished. It is now 4:40 in the afternoon, yep. and still no one has polished those tables. No. Now we've yep. got to feel some momentum. Okay. Consult myself. Told off. I'm really not sure just how seriously Chris is taking my plan to help him turn this place around. What a frustrating day. I don't feel I've got anywhere. You know, he seems sincere, Chris. Oh. But, you know, why then is he so ineffectual? Alex is right. Probably been a little bit too lapsed authority-wise. I think she went easy on me, quite honestly. But anyway... I've done my bit, I've said my piece, and now it's up to him to do something about it. Next morning, my words seem to have hit home. Yesterday, um, Alex gave us a bit of a bollocking, which spurred us on a bit and made us decide that we needed to do something sooner rather than later. Finally inspired by my advice to declutter and update the public rooms, after working late into the night, Chris is putting the final touches to a surprise for me in the armoury. We discussed weeks ago about making an area into a sitting area, and um, we just pinched bits of furniture from various places in the hotel. It uh, looks a hundred times better. What was an unloved extension of the dining room is now a welcoming sitting room for guests to relax and unwind. Ta-da! Oh, my goodness, Welcome darling. Welcome to our residence lounge. Gosh, this looks transformed. The carpet. I know. What do you think? This is literally a hundred times better. Yeah, absolutely. I so, really no, it just, please. It just, makes it, yeah, it just makes it feel... Like, where some of the residents, you know, can come down, sit, relax. Yeah, well done you, but Thank I think you. the main thing now is to make it clear whose responsibility it is, yep. whose butt gets whipped mm -hmm. if it isn't kept like this. Absolutely. But this is how it has to look the whole time. Absolutely, absolutely, I totally agree. At last, Chris is thinking about how to add value to the guest experience without spending a fortune, but there's still room for improvement. All I need is these pictures to be completely straightened up, please. Certainly. I'd quite like them all at that height, if possible. Matching the young Henry. Yeah. Super. Thanks, darling. No problem. I think this one. That looks so much better, and it wasn't exactly difficult, was it? No. All done. OK, all done. all done. Thanks, darling. Now, that is more like it. Upstairs, my design team's also finished work on two of the bedrooms. 
The room I stayed in has gone from dark and dated to calm and contemporary. For the cost of a coat of paint, I've replaced the red with soft heritage blue. Bold prints complement the existing period furniture. Next door, I've kept the red, but added splashes of bright color and cool gray. Without repainting, it's created an elegant, up-to-date style that's even easier and cheaper to achieve. Simple to copy templates that celebrate the hotel's history without being stuck in the past, and all designed with Chris's limited funds in mind. But I only have one more visit to Churston Court left, so I need Chris to understand the biggest obstacle to success still needs to be overcome. I think you actually have the bones of a very nice business, but unless you get hold of the staffing, mm -hmm. the whole thing is not going to work. No. You know, you want the staff all to be pulling together, making sure the food flies out, making sure everything's clean and tidy, making sure that people aren't flopping about the place. I mean, I've never seen people walk about a building so bloody slowly. <laughs> I mean, like really, you have to be rigorous with yourself. Absolutely. Make sure everyone does their job. job. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. I'm feeling a lot more positive than I did yesterday evening. I've left him quite a lot to do, but he's got a couple of weeks to accomplish it, and I really do feel that if he manages it, he will relax about his decision to buy this lovely old place. But with the success of the hotel riding on giving the staff training in the basics of good service... We've got 28 people in a restaurant and not one single member of staff. It isn't long before things reach boiling point. Well, how long does it take to put hot water in a teapot? They know people coming for tea. Put the tea on the fucking tables. Devon, owner Chris finally seems committed to my plan to turn around the ailing fortunes of the Churston Court Hotel. Just nip and tuck. Renovating the dated bedrooms using the cost-effective style templates I've given him. Let's see if it fits. Probably not. At the end of the day, I've done my best. Alex will either like it or she won't like it. So we'll wait and see. But beauty is only skin deep, and there's a more profound problem to tackle here. I'm still not convinced Chris is giving his staff the training they need. What I've seen time and time again is his staff just aren't quite up to scratch, and I need to get them there. Hello. Hello, hello, is that Chris? Yes, it is. It's Alex. Hi, darling. Hello, darling. So it's not long before I'm back, and what I'm planning on doing is sending in someone before my return Right. to whip your staff into shape and then to see if this staff training has had any effect. I'm going to send in a large group of people who would like to have cream tea. Right, OK. Does that sound OK? That sounds brilliant, yeah, put them to the test. A quintessential part of any visit to the West Country is classic afternoon tea. It's something that any well-run hotel should be able to offer. It's deceptively simple, but it's also a litmus test for basic good service. It was great when Alex phoned the other day. I was really looking forward to somebody come in and train the staff and just to try and pull those last loose ends together. And with 20 years' experience of training staff for the biggest names in hospitality, Suzanne Weeks is the perfect person to give Chris's team a crash course in the basics for me. When we're in hospitality, it's very much like being in the theatre, isn't it? We're on stage. So it's all about the meet, the greet and the seat. Put the customer at ease as soon as they arrive. I think Alex is looking for consistency, making sure we're doing what we're meant to. So we've got to remember that we need to replace that cutlery. Thinking ahead, starters, mains, desserts, what do they need to eat with? Is that for night right for you? Yes. So let's practice the clearing. There's a lot of motivation to improve and get better. That's exciting to see. Well done. And it's not easy, is it? Don't just go through the motions, be part of the experience. He could have said, how much of this would you like? Would you like all of it and need to leave it on the side? So he could have just had that conversation. 
I think the training's waking them up. Twist and lift. Make sure you don't touch the glass with the bottle. This is reality. This is what pays their wages. Do you remember I talked about service points all the time? Talking to them, eye contact, rapport. Keep this service <coughs> experience going. This is what gets them good tips. This is what gives the customer experience that we want to provide. Check on where their main courses are. If they're going to be another five minutes, keep them informed. Hopefully, we'll all get through it and remember everything. So we're four weeks into a menu, and only one person knows what the ingredients are. It's not the waiting staff's fault. They don't know these things. They're not being shown. OK? But we can learn and collectively make this better, because we have to. The staff work very, very well. They all try very hard. That's all right. Learn a lot from it. I mean, it's the first time I've done proper training. Are your table's ready in the restaurant for you? We look forward to the, you know, putting all, everything together and just showing Alex how far we've come forward. So I am back in Brixham. I'm quite excited to see what Chris has managed to accomplish, but unless there's a massive difference in staff and how professional they seem, then this whole project is going to fall down. Without good service, it's never going to be top on anybody's list. First, though, I need to see how Chris has fared following my style template for the bedrooms. Wow! Hi! Hello! How are what you? a difference! What do you think? So much brighter and more I know. cheerful. I know. Honestly, I am really impressed good. and thrilled. Much. Good. But with the future of Churston Court resting on improving the customer service, it's now down to Chris and his staff to impress my guests. Stand up straight, tummy in, tits out. Yeah, please do stand up straight, all of you. Thank you. Remember to smile? Do remember, that's the first thing that people see of you. Everyone confident? Absolutely. OK, well, Should into the fray. The large group I've invited from Torquay Bowling Club have had more cream teas than I've had hot dinners. So if anyone can judge the success of this one, it's them. Come on, don't be shy. <laughs> Looking very smart. Well, what? to Chester Court. You all right? Can I show you in? <laughs> the first six, we have a table over there for you, just Thank there. You. All right. I don't know who you would like to sit with. There's a nice table of six there. We've got six girls. They really want it to be a success here. They ought to be able to deal with this kind of thing standing on their heads. I'm pleased to see Chris is leading from the front. The question is, though, where's everyone else? What well, I'll tell you something I noticed straight away. We've got 28 people in a restaurant and not one single member of staff has stayed in the restaurant. Ed, someone's got to stay in the restaurant. Yeah, I'll Thank you. The staff might be back, but one vital element of any cream tea is still absent. Why do they not have tea yet? We've got two tables with tea only. The ones down my end don't have teapots yet, for God's sake. Good. Well, how long does it take to put hot water in a teapot? It's hardly the seamless customer service experience I was hoping for. I'm feeling really cross now. This is what I was worried about. They know people are coming for tea. Put the fucking tea on the fucking tables. So, you know, we're just waiting for these sponsors to come out. They should be out any minute now. I'm waiting on the kitchen a little bit here. <laughs> Where are these scones at? Yeah, here we are. Come on, chop chop. Right, two tables, please. That's the next two table of... Is this a table of four? Some of the training is paying off, though. Not only do the front of house team know the menu inside out. We've got crayfish sandwiches, we've got carnation, you've got cherry scones, normal scones, eclairs. They're also keeping everyone informed and happy. Last table. It was pretty shambolic to start with, but it does seem to have settled um, into a stride. Have you been offered more sandwiches? Yes. Have you been offered more tea? Yes. We've been offered more yeah. than we've had to say no, because we're up to the <laughs> Everyone's clearly taken on board the importance of engaging with guests. There's a lot here to fight over. Being attentive and putting them at their ease. What did you think of the service? Excellent. Oh, Couldn't be nice. Yes? Wonderful. That service was fine to make sure that we had everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
so it's been a positive experience. Very. Yeah. If we can, we'll probably try and come back another time. Oh, darling, music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. The quality of the food is good, and obviously that makes a big difference, but there have also been very positive comments about the service. So, you know, I think they've managed to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Yay! But today is just one day, and I'm still convinced the future success of Churston Court depends on providing consistently good service every day. In such a small space of time, you've managed to achieve so much. But your dream of running somewhere that you want to be a destination is imperiled by your service and by the level of experience of your staff. You need ongoing staff training. A little bit more... Uh... Yeah, knowledge. Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Do you think that's fair, Chris? I think it's. I think it's absolutely fair, Alex. What do you think, Jonathan? You're nodding away. Yes, I think that we need a lot more clarity in the structure and what's expected of the team. I think you've taken at least a, a few major steps along the right path. Mm -hmm. so. I've still got your list. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I should be still ticking them off one by one. That's all you've got to do, just keep on ticking, ticking, ticking the box. items off yeah, the list. Absolutely. Honestly, I think that we managed to accomplish a lot, but I am leaving here with one question still unanswered. Will they be able to create that really cohesive team to ensure that they can provide the level of service they need to to make this the success they desperately want it to be?